Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. And before I get on with this, the all important social media links. You're used to seeing them now, Kerry the Crafter on Facebook. If you go to the Etsy shop, my Etsy shop is Kerry the Crafter, you might be seeing a trend here. Um, I only do digital downloads currently, although there are plans in 2021, I might start introducing the odd physical product. But I'll let you know about that when I get to it. So let's move these out of the way. Now... This is only just a really short little project for you today, something that is requested by a couple of my followers. Now, we recently had something called Remembrance Sunday or Remembrance Day here in Britain, and that is where I made this for. Now, this is a thankful plaque, a thankful sign I made. Now, the reason we have it, it's our time to actually acknowledge the veterans and those who made sacrifices in the water. This was my thankful plaque. It was just an MDF piece from um, KTC Designs that I painted up with acrylics, and then I made the poppy using the flower pro system. However, what spiked people's interest, if I bring this up a little closer, people wanted to know how I made the miniature barbed wire. Um, I thought it was a really easy thing to do. Um, it just added some character to it, but I did promise my followers and I said, yes, I'll do it for you. So that's what we're doing in this one. So let's move this to one side. Now, as I'm working on the dark surface, you're not gonna see anything. So excuse me while I blind you with a bit of light colored paper stock. And let me just stick that down with some washi tape just so you're able to see what we're doing. Now, what you're gonna need for this, I tended to use archival ink and I use the sepia. You can use whatever color you wish to use for whatever project you're doing. I could use gray, I could use black, I could use Photoshop, I could use walnut stain. I like to use archival or a permanent ink so it doesn't come off on my product, a uh, project. Um, I needed a pair of wire snips. Um, I recommend having a rubber glove because you don't want to get that all over your fingers, especially when you're making videos. So let's put that onto one side a second. Now, what I use to make the barbed wire is I use this. Now, this is paper covered florist tape. You can pick it up easily on, um, on like the websites like Amazon or eBay. You can pick it up most places. You might even find it in a craft or a cake decorating shop because this is what they make sugar flowers on. And it comes in various different gauges and this one is paper covered. You can get them cloth covered, but I tend to use the paper ones. I'm not gonna give you a gauge for this because the gauge will be determined by the project you're making as to how thick you want it to be in scale for your project. So let's move the clippers to one side and put the old rubber glove on because this is where it starts to get messy so uh. okay now obviously I haven't got white barbed wire I've got brown barbed wire so what I do is I take my barbed wire or my piece of wire and I roll it back and forth on my ink pad and I work my way up and down until it's completely nicely browned all the way along as so I said you could do a combination of colors I chose um, this color because I wanted it to look rusted you could have done it with blacks or greens, or you could have done it with other colours to give it a variation, but I didn't. So there you go. So I've got my wire covered. So let's put all of the messy stuff out of the way. Let's take that to one side, off with the glove, because otherwise I'll have fingerprints all over this. So I've got a few lengths of it, and I've it dries almost instantly, but I do give it a few minutes to work on. Now, before I start showing you how to build it, let's talk about a few things. If I just want a length of barbed wire for my project, just a short length, the wires come in a 14 inch length. So if that's all I want, that's fine. If I want a continual piece, because you'll need two pieces per length, what I would suggest is joining them like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna twist our two wires together, but it's easier to do the join in the middle should you want to do it. So you've got one piece, two piece, one piece, two, all the way down the line. So I'm going to actually do the winding in a minute. The other thing you need to do is taking the other piece, cut lengths of the wire, probably about an inch and a half to two inches long. You don't need them this long in the final project, but I found if I made them the exact length I needed them, I struggled because I've got big fat fingers and it's a little tiny project. You trim your wires afterwards and you can make them much more realistic that way. So I've got those together. So let's take this and this. Now, just explain what I was saying before. So if I'm having a 14 inch length, 
I can just twist this together. If I want to make it continual, if I take this one to about the seven inch mark and twist this, and when I get to here, add another piece of wire. So I think that'll be pretty easy to understand that one. So I'm just gonna come in here and I found if I hold it in my fingers and twist and twist and twist, just keep going. If you look at real barbed wire, it is two twisted wires, or the one I researched did anyway, and it's just twisted around. I'm not sure how it was originally made historically, but I'm sure this is not far off the way it was done. Obviously not by hand, but definitely twisted. So let's put one length in, come in, and then obviously keep the twist going in the other so direction. That gives me my length of barbed wire. Don't worry if it starts getting kinked and out of shape. Barbed wire is not going to be perfect. Now, I then take my lengths of two inch pieces and I use it doubled, so I've got two, and I wrap it around a few times. And then when I get to the end, I make sure the ends are actually pointing in different directions. And then I'll come in and I'll snip these off. There you go, so that gives me my first little bit. And then I come down about two, two inches again. I do like to evenly space these because if you look at barbed wire, it actually is evenly spaced. So twist your wires on. Oops, sorry about the noise. Slip the ends off, slip the ends off, splay them out a little bit so they're separated. Now, I mean, I did this for that plaque, um, this freestanding plaque for Memorial um, Remembrance Sunday. If you're someone who does model making or you do war games or something, this might be something really handy for you guys to be able to make for your projects. So, so I'm not going to keep going. I'm just going to leave it at this because you've seen it. I just keep going now. Let's separate those out. Separate those out. Let's clear the rest of that off there. So as you can see, I make my barbed wire this way. What I would say though is be careful because these little pieces can get really sharp. So that was how I made the barbed wire. That's how I use it. I mean, you can twist it up, crinkle it up, do whatever you want. So if you're someone who's doing something that's slightly different, I mean, say you're doing a cowboy theme project and you want fencing. This is how I did the barbed wire. So let's see if I can do that that way so it focuses in. So there you go. So let's take one more look at the final project. And that's how I did it on there. On this one, I only did single twists of wire. It was only after I'd done this that I realized it should have been two twists of wire. But you know what? I didn't look at the picture properly. So, but this was adequate for what I needed. Just a nice little project for you. So once again, thank you for coming in. Thanks for joining me. That's Kerry the Crafter, C-E-R-I the Crafter. Again, the good old social media links. Um, I'll keep posting useful little things like that as I go along. Love to hear from you. I do try and answer comments, although I'm not very good at answering comments. I do try to jump on. And don't forget, if you want to visit my Etsy store, Carry the Crafter, it'd be great if you can favourite my store. That way you'll get notifications when I put new digitals on. So, until next time, until the next project, until the next thing I'm at my messy desk. Bye-bye now.